Governor Malloy says it's time to get on the bus, announcing the state will support a new Britain to Hartford busway. The $573 million bus project has been controversial, with opponents saying rail is the way to go. But Governor Malloy says it's not one or the other, and he has a plan to move Connecticut toward both. You'd think any idea to ease traffic in Connecticut would be a good one. And today, Governor Malloy said both buses and rail will be part of Connecticut's transportation plan. But for now, Malloy says Connecticut is going to focus first on the busway from New Britain to Hartford, saying it'll create jobs, get traffic off I-84, and Connecticut won't lose federal dollars. The decision uh, uh, would uh, uh, make it more difficult for us uh, to access, uh, access additional rail dollars. Malloy Roy says the busway is ready to go with a commitment from the feds to fully fund 80 percent of the project as soon as they knew Connecticut was also behind it. Malloy will now ask the Bond Commission for 89 million for the line and expects it to be running by 2014. But with all this talk about buses, the governor says he's not abandoning rail ideas. I believe we can continue down these two uh, avenues or tracks or whatever uh, uh, transportation word you want to use. He'll ask for a $1 million study focusing on whether a Bristol to Waterbury commuter line is practical. Opponents of the busway, with its dedicated roadway, have worried it would take the right-of-way needed for a rail line from New Britain and West, including Bristol. They say the governor's decision isn't ideal, but they think the study will eventually prove them right. Now we've got a commitment, and they're going to see how viable that this commuter line could be. Think of the cars you could take off the road if we had commuter rail service from Waterbury to Hartford. Think of in Hartford, Lori Perez, Fox, Connecticut News. Now here to tell us why this is the right way to go is Representative Tim O'Brien, why this is not the road we should go down, Representative Sean Williams, also reporter Christine Stewart from Connecticut, CT News Junkie, I should say. I, always, I never know what to say there. Connecticut, <laughs> CT, I don't know. got the right state. <laughs> exactly. So Representative O'Brien, I know that you know that the question that everybody is asking at home when this came out is, how can it possibly be $573 million? Well, I mean, I will be the first to say that, uh, that I'm not happy with how long it has taken to build this and, uh, and how much it has cost. As a legislator, uh, we only have the ability to either kill a project or make it go forward. And this is eminently a good idea for the uh, future of the state. In addition to the, the short-term construction jobs, of which there will be hundreds every year, um, which is so needed because so many of our construction workers are out of work, uh, it's going to create long-term economic development along the busway line, which is very important for places like New Britain. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's going to over, uh, relieve overcrowding uh, on the highways um, and be the first rapid transit system that we have in the state of Connecticut. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is a visionary policy. I'm very glad that the governor is, per, is pursuing it, and I think that he's doing a very visionary, important thing at this moment. So, Sean, those all, all sound like good things, jobs and a transportation system and et cetera. Yeah, they all sound great. You know, I could probably come up with a billion dollars of projects I'd like to see happen, and I'm sure that we can come up with another three billion if the three of you got to working on it, you know, with a pen and paper and try to figure out what you'd like to see. The bottom line is we are broke as a state. We have a three and a half billion dollar budget deficit that's growing every day, um, and if we really want to provide economic development opportunities in the corridor that Representative O'Brien refers to, and frankly down in my area of the state and throughout Connecticut, we have to foster an environment where we can do things that will grow the economy. You know, we have to do things that, and say no to things that will cost too much money and say no to things that will hurt business. So, uh, you know, there's a million things that we would all like to do in a perfect world. We don't have the money. So is that your main objection? Is that how much it costs? or? Well, I mean, that, that's first and foremost. I mean, obviously, everything that we do, in my opinion, this session needs to be all about the almighty dollar. You know, how can we save money and how can we get this budget uh, deficit under control? Uh, you know, frankly, I'm not so sure that the efficacy of this is, is the best idea. I'm not sure that, you know, there's going to be as many people using this uh, uh, as, as the proponents might indicate. Um, but frankly, over the years, this cost has increased dramatically. You look at the folks in West Hartford, a lot of them are not thrilled about this. We've taken property by eminent domain, taken property off of the tax rolls in West Hartford uh, you know, over the objection of the mayor and I think the council, although I don't know if the council actually uh, issued a formal opinion on it. Um, so there, there's, you know, the point is that you know, we need to take these whole things, all, all these situations that we have as a state, look at them as a whole, not just say, well, I want my project. If everybody's successful in protecting their own little project or their own little fiefdom, nothing changes. Yeah. We kind of have a habit of kind of blighting things in Connecticut. Um, I'm thinking about Flatbush Avenue off I-84. There's a whole stretch of roadway. I mean, is that something the busway is going to do? I mean, it's obviously taking property from 
West Hartford. But this is, uh, there are so many opportunities for what's called transit-oriented development uh, all along the busway line. I know more intimately the ones uh, in, in New Britain, downtown New Britain stands. Uh, there's plenty of uh, businesses that are ready to grow uh, in downtown New Britain, specifically because the busway is going up in, in a neighborhood uh, off of East Main Street where another busway line is supposed to be that's much more residential with multifamily and apartment dwellings. There's the opportunity for transit-oriented development in the form uh, built around that. The, uh, the housing stock, people without cars, saving the economy money and uh, being a little more environmental friendly, uh, get hopping on the busway line and getting to their uh, their jobs. So you can't only have people who don't have cars hopping on the line, right, if it's right. going to work? Mm -hmm. It actually, uh, the, the bulk of the uh, commuters on the busway line are actually projected not to be on, in the towns directly on the line, but but to the west and south of, uh, of uh, New Britain. Uh, and that's one of the advantages of, uh, of a busway as a form of, uh, of transportation, because you can have buses going from someplace else, get on the busway line, and then go uh, up the rest of the line. What kind of subsidies are we talking about? I mean, all public transit. I mean, whether it be rail, whether it be bus, I mean, it's subsidized in mm -hmm. some way. I think that we, we've always talked uh, in our state, uh, well, not always, but for the past decade or so, we've talked about how transportation has harmed our state economy, the fact that we don't have a good transportation yeah. system. Uh, we're going to have to invest in public transit. And that doesn't just mean downstate uh, along the shoreline. In the greater Hartford area, we're going to have to be doing it, too. The busway in between New Britain and Hartford is not just the only one that has to get done. There have to be other, other investments in public transit and in order to get people to use it there's going to be a little while where it's going to have to be have, it's going to have to be funded um, it's going to have to be subsidized in order for it to work at first but in the long run it will reap a, uh, a good benefit for our state economy. Representative Williams, one of the other things that the governor said that was that one of the key reasons why he went forward with this was because he didn't want to leave federal dollars on the table. I mean, do you buy that argument? Or? No, because any time now we decide we want to do something, if there's federal money avail available, we're going to do it. I mean, you know, Governor Christie, I think, made a very uh, compelling case as to why he canceled the project that they had uh, down in New Jersey. I mean, just because we have federal money available, my God, that doesn't mean we're an empty piggy bank. I mean, a bottomless piggy bank. We have uh, incredible debt here in the state of Connecticut. We have a budget deficit that we can't get our arms around. And we're already seeing businesses, despite the governor's uh, con conjecture to the otherwise, you know, we're seeing businesses say, we're not going to stay here if this is what you guys are going to do. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just adding to that debt with this project. I mean, you know, I voted against a number of bond commission agenda items last month, uh, not because I thought they were bad ideas necessarily, but because we don't have the money. It's mm -hmm. just not there. So is this a done deal at this point, do you think, Representative? Well, the governor's made the decision to, uh, to move forward with it, so I would say yes. Um, and uh, at this point, we need to be looking for how we can get it done as efficiently as possible so we can save as much, much in the way of taxpayer dollars as possible. Hopefully, when the bids actually come in, because, uh, because those construction companies are looking for work, then uh, they'll bid low and we'll uh, be able to save some money on the project. How much is the state's portion of it? The state's portion is, I think, $113 million. Yeah. Memory nerve serves me correct. Hey, and uh, you know, I mean, as long as we have you both here, we'll talk to talk about the budget in general and your hopes and in, um, in getting it done and, and seeing mm -hmm. it successful. What are your hopes? <laughs> I, I am hearing good word that uh, that we're going to have a process that's going to be expeditious. Um, I can guarantee that the budget that I vote for is going to be something I'm not going to like, with many mm -hmm. things in it individually that I don't like. Um, the important thing for me is that uh, in the end, that it's fair. There's going to be tough decisions. There's going to be decisions that nobody's going to like, and I think that that's what the bulk of the people in the state really want: is decisions that uh, that they can recognize that they're, that are fair, where no one particular constituency is bearing too much of the load. Uh, well, I, I would argue that over the last few years, and including this budget that's been proposed by the governor, that the taxpayers have uh, shouldered much larger of a burden than anybody else. We haven't seen any dramatic spending cuts in, in uh, the state budget. We haven't seen any dramatic union concessions. What we have seen is a lot of borrowing and a lot of tax increases, and that's what's being proposed again here this year. So, you know, New Jersey raised taxes 115 times in the last decade, 115 times. And guess what? They have a massive budget deficit. It's because they never got their arms around spending. We haven't done that in Connecticut either. That's we have to do this year. Otherwise, we're going to continue to lose jobs. We haven't created one net new job since 1989 in this state. Think about that for a minute. Since 1989. But that's a point the governor also makes in his town hall meetings. Well, if, if the governor or anybody else thinks that raising taxes on businesses and individuals and passing things like paid sick leave and other harmful business mandates is the way to create jobs, then God bless him, but I, I certainly don't agree with that. All right. Well, we appreciate you uh, both coming and spending some time talking about it. Christine, thanks very much for being here as well. Up next, it's always a good day to think about what you can do in your daily life to be greener, but perhaps especially on Earth Day.